So I've got um, this module here. It's an eight-digit frequency counter, and they're the ones I use on my um, on a few tuners and receivers. I put them into uh, analog tuners, so you can get digital readout on FM, and they're ever so cheap. They're um, less than ten quid, and they work from uh, about thirty kilohertz to 60 megahertz on the low range and on the high range it's about 60 to 1 gigahertz which is pretty impressive for what they are and I bought this one a few weeks ago on eBay from China obviously and when it arrived it didn't work it didn't do anything it didn't light up it was drawing about 45 milliamps which is not enough it should draw about 150 200 so I thought, well, I'll, I'll email the seller, and he said, oh, please don't leave me negative feedback, I'll send you a new one straight away. And he did, within a week, I had another one sent, which worked fine. But um, I should, I could have just chucked this one away. But I thought, well, I'll just try and find out what's wrong with it. So it's got two voltage regulators on it. There's a five volt regulator there. That's fine, that's working okay. It's also got a, a tiny little free 3.3 reg volt regulator there, which also is working. And I thought, well, I wonder if it's got any clock signal, you know, because it's got um, an onboard TCXO, 13 megahertz TCXO, temperature compensated crystal oscillator. And that was just here. I've removed it because there was no signal coming out at all. And it comes out on that pin. And I'll show you the other one. So on this one you can see when it focuses, there's the TCXO. And they're tiny little things, they're only five millimeters by three. Really small, but pretty impressive really. But they actually make them smaller than that. They um so they make they make them down to half that size, which I guess for cell phones, whatever. So as I found out, there was no 13 megahertz coming out of that DCXO. So I injected 13 megahertz from my function generator, and I'll just show you that. Okay, so I'm now, um, if I can get this thing to focus, injecting 13 megahertz into the, uh, it won't bloody focus. Okay, injecting 13 megahertz anyway. To where the output from the TCXO should be, and I can look and see that on the uh, function generator. And I've also got on the channel two of the function generator now going into the input of this module, and it's at one megahertz. And lo and behold, I'm getting a reading and it's working fine. One megahertz or whatever that's supposed to be with a decimal point. Um, what if I can do 10 megahertz on this generator? Yep, it does 10 megahertz, no problems at all. So that's working now and um, so then I thought well is it really worth buying a new TCXO? So I trawled through eBay, and much to my surprise, I found exactly the right, well, what appeared to be exactly the right one. Not from China, but from this country, a seller in this country. And um, it's only two pounds, so I've ordered one. And waiting for it to come now, so if it works, that'll be a cheap fix. But um, that wasn't the only problem with this board, well, it didn't have another problem, but another one of these counter modules I had had erratic readings on the um, high range. I was using it on about 100 and something megahertz on a tuner, and it wasn't giving a stable reading. So um, I tracked that down to the uh, prescaler module chip, I mean, which goes just there. And it's a divide by 64. It or it can be configured to divide by 64. So that's what they're using in this uh, 
device and it'll go up to one gigahertz, no problem. But um, as this original module was dead, I took that chip out and stuck it in the one that was giving erratic readings. And now that one's fine. But so then I went on to eBay again to get see if I could get a new prescaler for this uh, faulty one. And yeah, no problem. Two dollars from China. So I'm waiting for that to come as well. And that'll be the next part, installing the TCXO and the prescaler. And hopefully it'll all work again. And for four quid, I've roughly four quid, I've I fixed um, a module I didn't really need to fix because they sent me a new one anyway. So I'll see you in uh, part two of this bit. So the uh, TCXO turned up today. Only took a couple of days. It was a UK seller. Still waiting for the uh, prescaler chip, but that'll be a few weeks because it's come from China. I thought I could um, at least try this anyway. But it really is tiny. I took it out of the packet in the house and dropped it on the carpet. It took me um, nearly 10 minutes to find it. I had to use a magnet in the end. Fortunately, it was magnetic. And uh, having looked at the uh, data on it, data sheet, um, it appears above 10 megahertz, these need uh, 5 volts. So I might have to modify the um, circuit board because it's only 3.3 on the uh, board. But I think I can probably do that. But what I think I'll do is um, I'll wire it up on the bench um, and test it first before I put it in. Because I'm not entirely sure about the where pin 1 is on this. It's a bit hard to see the markings for pin 1. But um, let's turn it over. That's the back of it. So it's got four connections. Um, 3.3 volts, um, a trimming connection, which is for adjusting the uh, frequency. Uh, earth on uh, the opposite end to the uh, power supply. And the output pin, which is seems to suggest that you need 10K load on it. Well, I'll have to try it on the bench anyway and see how it performs. So um, I think I'll just try and wire it up and um, I'll do that off camera because it's hard enough to do it as it is without trying to do it through the camera. Right, so I've got it wired up on the bench as you can see. That was hard enough doing that. Um, and I'm just going to turn the power on, put it on 3.3 volts. Okay, turn the power on and it's not drawing anything according to the uh, power supply, but uh, I'll just stick my scope on it and see what I can see. What's the output on that one there? Right, I've got, um, got something on the scope. It looks like a pretty good sine wave. I'll just move the camera. Right, so I've just had to go and turn the lights off as usual. So, get my scope on it. Okay, I'm, yeah, that's pretty good. That's 13 megahertz, exactly what I want. And volts RMS, 1.29 volts. So obviously I've got it connected up the, wrong, the right way around. And it's quite a decent output and it's, still, and it's working fine on 3.3 .3. um, I've got the current limiting set to 10 milliamps just in case I connected it up the wrong way around uh, okay so I can try and put it in there and that's going to be hard I have to do that off camera as well got it in on the board and did a fairly good job not quite as good as it would be I had to use hot air but, you know, it's, um, well, I suppose I have to test it now, see if it works. Turn the power on. Uh, it's drawing uh, nearly 200 milliamps, that's a good sign.
Right, doing something. Well, at least it seems to be um, producing a, an output from that um, TCXO. Just turn the f generator on. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, what's that? 9.999967 megahertz. Got 10 megahertz from the generator. So it's a bit out. It needs trimming a bit. So let's see if I can trim it. It's got a little trimming uh, potentiometer. It's a bit hard to get the uh, trimming tool in it. Wrong way. Quite a long way off. About 20 hertz out now. Getting close. I was afraid that because it was a different module, different TCXO, I might not be able to trim it. That's close enough. That's, um, yeah, that's fine. That's 10 megahertz. So, um, that's a success story then for that. Can't um, test it on the high range because there's no prescaler. But I can just go through some of the uh, functions. It's got two gate times. Um, that's on one second at the moment. I switch it down. Obviously, that's that's point one second. So you get um, hundred ten hertz resolution on that one and uh, one hertz resolution on that one, on the low band. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll wire up the other one they sent me that um, was a replacement for this faulty one. And I'll take you through some of the other functions that these little units do and show you how useful they are. Um, okay, I'll just do that. Okay, so this is um, the replacement for the faulty one that they sent me and uh, the moment I'm on the testing it on the high range, so I've got 100 megahertz going in from the uh, signal generator, and I'll just take you through some of the uh, menu functions. So if I press this button here, that's the menu, and what you can do with these, you can program an IF offset. So you know, if you're measuring the local oscillator from a tuner, and you want a digital display for your analog tuner you program in the IF which is normally 10.7 so I do that to select that that one's fine so next one is a 7 and I go up to put in 7 and then it keeps cycling through the others till you get to the end and then it will add or subtract your IF and uh, as I if you assume that my local oscillator is running at 100 megahertz and your receive frequency now would be 89.3 megahertz so it's obviously subtracting that number 10.7 um, that's what makes these very useful you can also um, change the uh, whether you want to subtract or add the IF offset and the other functions are this channel is um, Channel selection, high or low, high automatic or low. I, I usually use it in uh, either high or low channel. I wouldn't bother with the automatic because that tends to dither around, doesn't seem to know which channel to, to take it from. Anyway, and it goes back to the beginning again. And what else have we got in the menu? Um, we've got filter, DF filter. Well, I don't bother with that, it's some sort of high pass filter, so forget that one. And the last one is I think display brightness on 4 at the moment, and it goes right up to 8, which is pretty bright, and down to 1, which is dim. And that's about it really. Um, of course it could do with a, a bit of red uh, acrylic in front of it to get better contrast, but um, 
anyway it is what it is and I just get rid of that IF offset I can go through all this again right back to the beginning measuring 100 megahertz just do a frequency response on the high input so I've got 100 megahertz at the moment with 0 dBm um, that's 200 that's fine take it up to 500 that's pretty good still 900 struggling a bit at 900 of course this um, cable I'm using is a bit lossy for such a high frequency but you know it's still pretty good that's a gigahertz I'll stick a bit more power up it so that's about 7 dBm going into it and it's still measuring it a gigahertz fairly fairly well anyway but um you know when i think about it, it it's you know it's pretty good impressive for the money very good value for money and um when i think back to the early 80s when i first built a, a frequency counter it cost me about 100 quid to build a basic counter that went up to about i don't know 30, 30 megahertz maybe and on top of that i had to buy a prescaler which is a divide by 10 in a box that was about another 50 quid on top so it is pretty impressive what you can get now from China for such little money so that's about the end of the video thanks for watching bye for now